you very much. Yeah. The guy gave me some bonus hand sanitizer. So this week's yarn shipment has finally arrived and um, I'm going to go ahead and get it open and sort it out. And then I also have a new batch of dyes that have come and I need to open that up and get those put away over there on my overstocked dye shelves that I really need to come up with a better solution for organization wise. But um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and open these boxes and sort some things out while I wait for my pants to warm up. Sometimes really annoying accidents happen in the dye studio um, and I forgot a lid was not on my dye uh, all that well and so this happened. Um, dye powder came out of the bucket and onto my arm and it's really not a huge deal. You don't freak out about it but you really have to be careful with what you do with it. <laughs> so I was standing here for a few seconds just kind of contemplating what am I gonna do with this mess on my arm? I have a solution. I have a pan over here that's a, a deep water pan, has a little bit of dye left in it that I was gonna use for a lucky strike. Well, we're gonna go ahead and add to that. Um, the water is kind of warm, um, so I'm gonna just, this is how far I'll go to conserve dye and create lucky strikes uh, because I don't like to waste dye or anything really. So. We're gonna have, um, we're gonna make a lucky strike here in a rather unconventional way. I don't wanna pull my jacket off because it'll just shake all this all over. Okay, so now that this is wet, I can go ahead and flip off my jacket and I'm just gonna put the arm of my jacket into this pan and get any of the excess dye out of the sleeve and then I'll toss it in the wash. This will actually come out, believe it or not, of this fabric because it's cotton and it won't adhere, so no big deal. Of course, then you get, you know, this nonsense that happens, but that's easy to take care of. And uh, yeah, no, no big deal. We're just going to take care of things. Okay, so these are my Lucky Strike pans for right now. The water has been, um, I kind of have washed off a few things already in some of them, and I wash different utensils in each one. This is the one that I wash my sleeve in. <laughs> um, but I wash different utensils in each one because I want to try and vary the colors. So I'm gonna go ahead and wash off the rest of the utensils that I have in each of these pans, and then these will be used for my Lucky Strikes um, for next weekend's update. Um, or at whatever point I decide to put them in the shop. So I have these ones and then I have these ones right here that will also be used as well.
Okay, so this bucket of towels here is not very pretty, but the reason it looks like this is because when I have um, a week of dyeing, um, I use these towels to clean up my table uh, after I've been dyeing and the dye particles get on the table. You know, I just use this as a kind of general towels that I use to clean the surfaces. And then at the end of the dyeing sessions, I will rinse these off into a dye bath and that dye that's on the towels actually comes right off into the water and helps me create my Lucky Strike baths. And then I can wash these in the washing machine. I don't like to wipe tables down with these towels and get all of this dye in here and then put that straight into the washing machine. So I like to add this to a um, Lucky Strike dye bath. Now I have this one right here. That's this really pretty shade of pink. Um, but because it's a rather light color, I would like to add some more to that. And I know it's pretty the way it is, but I don't want to use any more water than I have to, but I still have things here that I need to rinse off. So this is going to become a little bit of a different shade of pink because I'm going to use it to rinse off this towel here after I use this towel again because I can... Um, fold it over and use a clean side to clean up things like what you see like right here and then I had a little bit more of a spill right over here so I'm going to use the towel to wipe all that up and then that's going to be used in here and you can see that I've even done some rinsing of utensils in here because there's some dye particles that haven't quite dissolved yet so we'll dissolve those um, as we rinse off our towels but that's what I'm going to do right now and just get this stuff cleaned up and get inside. Oh, actually, I have this. Um, this is like clear water. So what I'm gonna actually do is with that towel, maybe I can keep that pretty pink. And with my towel, I can rinse it in here since this is clear. And that way I can use this water again um, and have a couple, have a little bit more variety in the color. Um, yeah, so I can get double use out of this water here too. So that would be great. So I'm gonna actually do that. So I'll wipe things with this towel and I will rinse it in that pan. Okay, so I'm really happy that I decided to do that because this is a really pretty amber color um, and I feel like that mixed with the um, pink only would have just made that pink a little bit more. It would just warm the pink up, but I guess I kind of like the pink the way it is and I like this the way it is. So it's a win-win and double use of the water. So that's good. That's kind of how my Lucky Strikes work and it's an awesome process that I have been employing since the very beginning and it saves me from having unnecessary waste. And it's kind of a really cool way of offering up unique uh, solids and tonals. And sometimes they're even slightly variegated. And depending on the way that the particles are moving through the water, they might even have their own like interesting speckle look. They're just true one of a kind colors, very interesting, but it's, uh, it's awesome to be able to offer those in the shop and to have them go so well with the other colorways that are regular colorways. So yeah, love Lucky Strike colorways. And uh, yeah, you can learn more about this process. I, I have a, an article about it over on the shop site. I'll link to it down below um, if you want to learn a little bit more about Lucky Strikes. But um, yeah, that's them. And I think I'm good for today. Everything's rinsed off. So I'm going to put my pans up on the table, get things organized, go inside. just called in to Mothership Coffee and put in our order. So um, 
I called and told him what we wanted and then I paid over the phone so we can just pull up and one of us or both of us, <clears throat> well, one of us will get out of the car and go pick up our coffees and we will have supported a local business who's still trying to do what they can for the community and for their business while at the same time providing a safe space for their employees and, and all of that. So I feel really good about this. Um, the point is to not stay away from home, not to like mingle in public places or whatever, but to just kind of do what you need to do and get home. And that's kind of what we're doing. Um, we're going to go, we have, we have to pick up something at Target um, for pickup where they, or they like bring it out to your car. Um, I need witch hazel because I was going to try making baby wipes. I, and I say like I'm going to make baby wipes because I ran out of baby wipes and I can't get any at the store. But this is not coming from a place of like, we're never going to be able to get baby wipes. They're going to be sold out forever. Like, no, this is not that. Like, I am not worried about being able to get baby wipes in the very near future. In fact, we can actually order them on Amazon right now and they'll be here on Monday. No big deal. This is more from like a place of wanting to just see what it's like to make baby wipes and like give myself a pat on the back for having done something <laughs> like maybe, you know, what do you call that? Um, like just extra thrifty. And so I thought I'd give it a try, but I needed witch hazel to do it. So we um, ordered some witch hazel from Target, which is really good to have just in, in general. So um, we're going to do that. We're going to do our pickup order at Target, swing by Mothership get our coffee and then my husband is going to go by that brewery I was telling you about where they are doing um, drive up service and he's going to get his growler filled and then we're going to come home um, and continue this uh, time that we have at home right now so kind of that's what we're doing doing the whole social distancing thing so that's what we're going to do tonight is just going to be making some dinner getting some knitting in putting the boys to bed and then my husband and I might watch a movie or something so that's what the rest of the day is looking like. Say hi. 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 Oh, the guy is coming. I don't want to make him uncomfortable by filming him. Alright, we are en route to Mothership Coffee Roasters. Oh no. No. Oh. I'm starting to worry about our hand sanitizer supply because ever since this whole thing became like serious this is the only thing that I've had it's this tiny little bottle of hand sanitizer um, and uh, yeah that's all I've got because when I went to go buy some more hand sanitizer it was all gone I wonder why but I do have a big thing of like this stuff you know whatever but anyway now I'm the proud owner of some Thayer's that I can make baby wipes for that one. guy dressed as Chewbacca. Take a look at the menu real quick. Go. Uh, you guys want a little spritz of uh, some sand size too? Thank yeah. you. Of course. I'll do the, I'm going to do a growler of the It's a Trap. Okay. And then can I get uh, some of the green with envy cans? Can? Yeah. How many uh, four packs did you want? Oh, I have an idea. Maybe you can help me out. Can you spritz some sanitizer in this? Yeah. It's the only one I have. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so yeah, much. Of course. No problem. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. That guy gave me some bonus hand sanitizer. They're in really good moods. Yeah. Because they're, they're making, doing business. Here comes our dinosaur. <laughs> oh, oh, hi. There you go. Thank you. Josh. Yeah. <laughs> Social distancing. Social distancing. Yeah. The seat's coming up. Right. Thank you. <laughs> Social distancing. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to be making some baby wipes. 
Um, I don't have the Dr. Bronner's, just something like um, Castile soap. But what I do have a lot of is Euclid, which is a, um, it's this, this is what I use to soak my yarn um, after I dye it. Sorry, there's some stuff going on behind me. <laughs> but this is what I use to soak my yarn after I dye the yarn. And it's an all, like a, a natural, um, very gentle, but it is a lanolin enriched um, concentrated wash and it's very, very um, safe to use on skin and it's very delicate and the lanolin is actually really, um, really good for your skin. So I'm gonna use a little bit of this in place of the Castile, um, in place of the Castile soap that it calls for in the recipe. And I will only use just a little bit because it's really, it's very concentrated so a little goes a long way. So I'm gonna try that. Plus it has a really beautiful um, natural lavender smell. Um, yeah, so we'll see how it goes. So here comes DIY baby wipes. <laughs> 